Hey, mother factors, Jank Sam, and today I'm here to talk to you all about the Scandinavian sensation, the Nordic non-parel, the freezing phenomenon that is Sweden. Sweden has contributed so much good to the world, much of it spherical. Confused? <laughs> well, I guess you'll have to keep watching to find out what I mean, won't you? But why do Swedish people regularly scream out of their windows? Why does Sweden import rubbish from Norway? And is the Swedish chef the king or president of Sweden? I should really learn more about international politics. Anyway, two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so get comfortable on your stocks and armchair, grab yourself some Sir Stoneming and salt licorice, and prepare to be Swedenated right up the Jack Sea with 101 facts about Sweden. Mikkel bra. Number one. Sweden, known officially as the Kingdom of Sweden, is a Scandinavian country in Northern Europe. Are you with me so far? Yes, good. The rest of the video would be a bit of a slog if you weren't, frankly. Number two. Sweden is nicely sandwiched between Norway to the west and north, and Finland to the east. Sweden is also connected to Denmark to the southwest by a bridge tunnel across a super narrow strip of water known as the Aresand. Number three. Sweden is generally divided into three distinct regions, which are stacked on top of one another vertically like the sections of a fab. Ah, oh, I remember those. The southernmost region is Jotland, Svealand is found in the middle, and Norland sits atop the north. Sorry if I mispronounce anything like that because, uh, oh, apparently I mispronounce things all the bloody time according to the comments section. Number four. At a hefty 450,295 square kilometers, Sweden is the third largest country in the European Union by area behind Spain in second place and France, which takes the gold medal. Number five. Sweden has a total population of roughly 10 million people. Interestingly, around 2.3 million of those people have a foreign background, meaning that almost a quarter of all Swedes have recent ancestry from outside the country. Number six. Sweden has a pretty low population density of only 22 inhabitants per square kilometre. The highest concentration of people is in the southern half of the country, i.e. most of Jotland and Svealand. Furthermore, roughly 85% of the population of Sweden lives in urban areas. Number 7. The modern Swedish word for Sweden is Svaria, Svaria, which simply means realm of the Swedes. Pretty simple, unlike IKEA instructions. Ho ho! Zing! Got you there. Oh, it's probably racist for me to mention IKEA, but there we go. Number 8. There is evidence to suggest that people have been living in what is now known as Sweden since as early as 12,000 BC. But Sweden first emerged as an independent state much later on during the early 12th century. In the year 1280, King Magnus Lada Lus issued a statute which established a nobility and granted them numerous rights and privileges, including freedom from taxation. Oh dear, typical posh boy. I shouldn't pay any tax because I've got loads of money. <laughs> Number 9. A couple of centuries later, the population of Sweden was decimated by the Black Death. Oh, classic Black Death. Which killed two thirds of the Swedish population. At this point, Scandinavia's culture, finances and languages came under threat from a powerful merchant association called the German Hasiatic League. In response, the kingdoms of Sweden, Norway and Denmark joined together under a single monarch in 1397, creating what was known as the Kalmar Union. The Kalmar Union lasted almost 130 years until Sweden rage quit in 1523, becoming a strong, independent country that don't need no man in a crown. Number 10. In 1630, Sweden decided to get involved in the religious conflict known as the Thirty Years' War, which had already been raging for years. The Swedish involvement snatched the Protestant side of victory from the Catholic jaws of defeat, and resulted in a significant decline of Catholicism in Northern Europe. At this point, Sweden solidified its position as one of the great powers of Europe, which lasted for hundreds of years after. Sifra Elva! In the year 1658, oh, I'll remember that, what a great year it was, the sea between Sweden and Denmark froze over so completely that 9,000 Swedish soldiers and their horses literally walked across frozen water and besieged Copenhagen. Number 12. Unfortunately for the Swedes, during the 18th and 19th centuries, Sweden began to lose many of their territories outside the Scandinavian peninsula, culminating in the annexation of what is now Finland by Russia in 1809. Oh, poor Finns. Number 13. The last war in which Sweden was directly involved flared up in 1814, when Denmark was forced to cough up Norway, which was forced into a union with Sweden which lasted until 1905, at which point it was peacefully dissolved. The, the union, not the country. Since 1841, Sweden maintained an official policy of neutrality in foreign affairs, meaning that it's been at peace for over 200 years, even throughout both world wars. Number 14. 
That being said, although Sweden was officially neutral in both World War I and II, the country did engage in humanitarian efforts. During the Second World War, Sweden took in refugees from German-occupied Europe, including almost all of Denmark's Jews, who Hitler, and I'm gonna say it, that dick, had ordered to be arrested and deported to concentration camps. However, Sweden also allowed the Nazis to use their railways to transport arms and troops and traded with Germany throughout World War II, so it's a bit of a mixed bag of should we help the Nazis or not? Number 15. Between the 1850s to the 1930s, roughly 1.5 million Swedish people emigrated to North America. The population of Sweden in that period was never more than 3.5 million, so that's really saying something. Most America-bound Swedes ended up in Minnesota, where the American Swedish Institute is located in the state capital of Minneapolis. Number 16. After the Cold War ended, Sweden joined the European Union on the 1st of January 1995, but also chose not to adopt the Euro and also declined NATO membership. <laughs> oh, those rebels. Number 17. Sweden is home to over 95,000 lakes larger than 100 square meters. That's over 9.5 million square meters of lake, people. I'm trying to make this sound impressive, but I genuinely have no idea how much lake is a lot of lake. Like... Number 18. The Orland Islands, an archipelago located at the entrance of the Gulf of Bothnia, are officially part of Finland, but are home to a Swedish-speaking minority who have their own government, flag, and culture. Number 19. Because of its proximity to the Arctic Circle, Sweden regularly experiences long, dark winters, which can lead to some of its citizens to suffer from seasonal affective disorder. As such, some bus stops in Sweden have been fitted with phototherapy lights to combat the effect of barely seeing the sun for months on end. Number 20. Sweden's northernmost town is Karuna, and is located well within the Arctic Circle. The town is so far north, in fact, it does this really mental thing where the sun does not set at all certain times of the year, and subsequently doesn't rise at all for most of December. Number 21. Nowadays, Sweden is renowned for its Nordic social welfare system. Swedish citizens enjoy universal healthcare and university education entirely free of charge at point of use. Wow, that is, that, that's good. I like that a lot. However, this comes at the price of high taxes. And with a tax rate of over 50% of GDP, Swedish people are among the most highly taxed in the world. However, most Swedes seem to be fairly happy with the situation. In fact, the Swedish word for tax is skatt, which doesn't mean anything filthy. It means treasure. Ah. Number 23. Since 1901, the Nobel Prizes have been awarded every year in Sweden to honor excellence in various fields, with modern categories including physics, medicine, literature, peace, and YouTube fact videos. I uh, hope to collect my statue out this year. As of last year, almost 585 prizes have been awarded to 923 people and organizations. Number 24. In case you didn't know, the Nobel Prizes are the legacy of Alfred Nobel, who left a massive amount of money in his will to the establishment of the Nobel Prize. Oh, and also he invented dynamite in 1866, so well done, Alfred. I don't know what that coyote from Looney Tunes would do without you. Number 25. Sweden has managed to accrue seven Nobel Prizes for literature, including the first woman to win the prize, Selma Lagerlöf, who won in 1909. Morbaka, a large mansion in west-central Sweden, has a national shrine and memorial to Lagerlöf. Number 26. But it's not just writing that Swedes have done good at. A number of important inventions and innovations are Swedish in origin. The pacemaker, the refrigerator, the ultrasound, the astronomical lens, and computer mouse were invented in Sweden or by Swedes living abroad. So without the Swedes, you wouldn't be able to see your baby and paste it all over Facebook. Oh, I'm having a baby. Yeah, we get it, Chan. Number 27. To date, Sweden has won 636.5 Olympic medals in total. The half a medal, which you may be thinking, uh? about is due to the fact that at the 1900 Olympics in Paris, Sweden competed alongside Denmark in a tug of war with France, and Sweden Mark won the gold. Number 28. Of course, no discussion about Sweden would be complete without mentioning everyone's favourite international sensation that is IKEA. Did you know that everyone's favourite purveyor of Scandi design also sells roughly 1,836,000 meatballs across the globe every single day? No? Well, you do now. Do with that information as you wish. Eat it up like a meatball. Number 29. In 2006, IKEA opened up a store in Haparanda, a municipality in Sweden, in the most northerly county of Norrbotten, making it the northernmost IKEA in the world. Temperatures there regularly drop to minus double digits during the winter, so I think I'll just go to the one in Croydon, thanks very much. Number 30. Speaking of Haparanda, the town is so close to the Finnish town of Tornio that they share the same post office with two separate phone lines, one for calls to Sweden and one for calls to Finland. Number 31. Similarly, there's a golf club on the border of Sweden and Finland with half the holes in one country and half in the other. 
You probably have to bring your passport to go. <laughs> oh, security would be awful, wouldn't it? Number 32. The three-point seatbelt is also a Swedish invention too, and is said to have saved one million lives. It was first introduced in 1959 by Volvo, and today are found in billions of vehicles worldwide. Number 33. The world's largest scale model of the solar system can be found in Sweden. The sun is represented by the Ericsson globe, with the models of various planets, celestial bodies and solar features dotted around the country at a maximum distance of 950 kilometers across. And yet, the model has a scale roughly 1 to 20 million. Wow, space really is huge. We could have a video about space. What? We already do? What a coincidence. Watching after this one. Number 34. Possibly Sweden's most celebrated scientist is Carl Linnaeus, who was born in the countryside of Småland in southern Sweden in 1707. Linnaeus is best known for creating the formal system of naming organisms known to bionormal classification, which enables all plants and animals to be consistently named and classified, which, you know, is helpful in science. Linnaeus himself created the term Homo sapiens, so in a way, he named all of us. He also called you a homo, so you gonna take that, are you? No, actually, that's probably... Number 35. Sweden's Uppsala University has in its possession a famous 4th century Bible, known as the Silver Bible, which is considered by many to be one of the world's most valuable books. The Silver Bible is an incomplete version of the New Testament, written in ancient Gothic language using silver and gold ink. It's pretty much the most blinged and pimped out Bible you'll ever come across. Blood? Oh, why did I say blood at the end? I ruined it. Number 36. One of history's most popular video games, World Building Simulator Minecraft, was created by Swedish programmer Marcus Notchperson as a one-man passion project. First released in 2011, the game has since sold more than 144 million copies, making it the second best-selling game of all time after Tetris. Tack, Sweden. Number 37. The Swedes are also behind the uber-popular freemium mobile game Candy Crush. Swedish games development company King has had their game downloaded almost 500 million times, and in 2013, the game generated a staggering $1.5 billion in sales. That's 11.8 billion Swedish kroner. Number 38. You can also thank Sweden for its massive contribution to the world of music in the form of one band, Bass Hunter. Oh, nope, sorry, I mean ABBA. The group has sold over 375 million records worldwide, which, depending on who you ask, makes them the third or fourth best-selling music act in history. What an interesting fact that is. Does your mother know? Ah, oh, okay. Number 39. ABBA are remembered even today for not only their extensive catalogue of bangers, but also the ridiculous outfits they wore during their spectacular live performances. The members of ABBA have since revealed they wore these wacky costumes primarily to avoid Sweden's taxes, which allowed deductions for clothing if it wasn't meant for everyday use. <laughs> That's the name of the game. It's a, ABBA's, it doesn't matter. Number 40. The capital of Sweden is Stockholm, a city built on 12 islands and over 50 bridges, leading it to being given the nickname the Venice of the North. To be fair, basically anywhere with enough water gets that nickname. Cue you all the people from Birmingham saying, oh, we have more canals than Venice. No one cares, Birmingham. All right? Gah. Number 41. Stockholm is also home to Skansen, the world's first open-air museum, opened all the way back in 1891. Skansen depicts examples of Swedish rural life from various time periods between the 16th century and 20th century, and attracts more than 1.3 million visitors each year. Meaning in Medlevit. In an attempt to make obeying the speed limit fun, which is possibly the most boring string of words I could have ever uttered, Stockholm tested a speed camera lottery, which automatically entered speed limit abiding drivers into a prize pool funded by the fines paid by those caught speeding. Ah, oh, karma's gonna get ya. Number 43. One interesting Stockholm phenomenon is the tradition of the Flogster Scream, in which the denizens of Flogster, a residential area in Stockholm, stick their heads out of windows at 10pm every Tuesday and scream their little Swedish lungs out for several minutes. This is done to relieve the stress caused by university exams, although that sounds like it causes more stress than it solves. Number 44. Stockholm is renowned for its colourful art-covered metro stations. More than 90 of the 100 stations have been covered in mosaics, paintings, sculptures and carvings, meaning it's been dubbed the world's longest art gallery. Number 45. Greta Garbo, you know, the legendary Hollywood actress and Swede, which is why we mention her, had her first job as a sales assistant in the hat section of the pub department store at the Hotteket City Square in Stockholm. She later starred in over 30 films and spent most of her life in the US before dying in New York City in 1990, like one classy B. I hope I die in NYC. Or Norwich, whichever's easiest. Number 46. Stockholm also boasts the largest hemispherical building in the world, 
Known as the Ericsson Globe, which we mentioned earlier, the building stands proudly at 85 metres high with a diameter of 110 metres. Number 47. Stockholm also has an entire museum dedicated to ABBA, which I've been to actually, which allows visitors to gaze upon all manner of ABBA memorabilia, such as the band's numerous gold records and aforementioned wacky wardrobe pieces. The stated goal of the museum is to let the patrons experience the feeling of being the fifth member of ABBA, which it facilitates by allowing you to get on stage with sophisticated holograms of the band. I nearly did that as well, but my girlfriend told me not to. Number 48. Northern Sweden is home to the indigenous Sami people, whose ancestral homeland, Sápmi, known in English as Lapland, stretches over the top of the Scandinavian peninsula, across Norway, Sweden, Finland and even Russia. Sweden specifically has around 20,000 Sami people, who even have had their own parliament. Number 49. Famous people with Sami ancestry include actress Renee Zellweger and singer Joni Mitchell. They're a talented bunch, apparently. Number 50. The Sami people are also known for their joiks. No, I didn't just slip on something when I said that last word. Joiks are a form of traditional Sami song that are meant to evoke the essence of something, such as a person, a place, or event. Though the tradition has existed for a very long time, nowadays joiks have been brought to the mainstream, with them even being performed on Sweden's Got Talent. Number 51. Contrary to our puny four seasons, the Sami year traditionally has a total of eight, each connected to the annual cycle involving the process of reindeer herding. Number 52. The majestic moose is widely considered to be the most dangerous animal in Sweden, likely because they cause approximately 6,000 road accidents in Sweden every single year. Number 53. Between 30,000 and 400,000 moose roam the Swedish countryside. During the annual hunt, in which around 250,000 people participate and is said to have almost a religious status in Sweden, as many as 100,000 moose are shot every year. God, no wonder they cause car accidents. I'd be angry if I was them as well. Number 54. The danger of moose-related car crashes is so severe that Sweden even requires cars to pass a moose test. Cars must be able to swerve very quickly around a hypothetical moose without flipping over, in the apparently very likely event that a moose should appear suddenly in the middle of the road. Number 55. In reality, however, moose are far from being the deadliest animal in Sweden. That honour goes to the evil little literal pricks known as wasps. Wasps kill more people directly, rather than causing car accidents, than any other animal in Sweden, slaughtering roughly one highly allergic person a year. Number 56. There are also roughly 250 wolves roaming around in rural Sweden. Swedish wolves mainly chow down on moose, and one family of Swedish wolves can kill as many as 120 moose per year. They're a protected species though, and it's against the law to kill them unless they repeatedly attack humans or property. So just be cool, wolves. Just be cool and no one has to get hurt. No one has to go Liam Neeson on the grey to ya. Number 57. There are approximately 260,000 reindeer in Sweden, and are a traditional source of meat for many communities, especially in the very north of the country. Reindeer milk apparently tastes sweet, and is said to look like melted ice cream. I'll be the judge of that, perhaps one day when I visit again this year. Number 58. Swedish is the official language of Sweden, but the country officially protects five other minority languages. Finnish, spoken by the Finnish minority of Sweden. Mjönkali, a separate dialect of Finnish spoken mostly in Sweden. Sami, the language of the Sami people. Romani, the language of the Romani people. And Yiddish, a Jewish language originating in Germany. Number 59. The Swedish language is known for its notable similarity to Norwegian and Danish. Owing to their common history, many people consider the three languages to be more of a language spectrum, as each one is at least somewhat mutually intelligible with the others. As such, it's often said that by learning either Swedish, Norwegian or Danish, one is actually learning all three. Number 60. In many ways, the Swedish tongue is the Zui de Chanel of languages, in that it's adorably yet irritatingly quirky. One Swedish word that is spelled the same as the English is gift, but is pronounced yeft and has two separate meanings, the first of which means married. Ah. The second definition is poison. Oh. Not only that, the Swedish word for good is bra, the word kiss means urine, and their word for end is slut, creating an unfortunate situation in which the Swedish term for the final stop of a bus or train route is a slut station. I think I've been on that website before, actually. Number 61. The Swedish term lagom doesn't have a direct equivalent in English. The word refers to things that are just right, like Goldilocks. As in, Goldilocks said just right, Goldilocks wasn't just right, oh god. The term can be used for just about anything, and has even captured the imagination of outsiders with the same tedious inevitability that brought the Danish notion of Higgy, 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 to our shores. Number 62. A number of Swedish words have made it to the English language. Possibly the most well-known is moped, a portmanteau of motor and pedal. 
Other examples include ombudsman, orienteering, and tungsten, which literally means heavy stone. Number 63. According to the Swedish Academy, the longest word in the Swedish language is, oh god, here we go, Realisa hun svinsbarskattning, which translates to capital gains tax. Oh, Sweden. You've got nothing on Germany, my friends. Nintendo 64. There is a remote valley in Sweden where people still speak an ancient dialect of Old Norse called Elfdalian. It's considered by many to be the closest language to that spoken hundreds of years ago by the Vikings, and up until the 1900s, it was still written using runes. Number 65. Almost 90% of people in Sweden speak English, which is good for us British Philistines abroad. British people by and large do not speak Swedish, but guess what Sweden? We don't have to. <laughs> Although I am trying to learn, because I do have relatives over there and I want to speak to them. Number 66. One of the most internationally renowned Swedish dishes consists of Swedish meatballs served with mashed potato, gravy and lingonberry jam. You can get it at every IKEA restaurant, and frankly it's the main reason I go to IKEA. Number 67. An interesting aspect of Swedish culture is that of fika. Fika essentially refers to taking a coffee break, and is usually accompanied with pastries and light conversation. It's such an important part of Swedish life that many companies give employees two daily fika breaks a day. That was, that's what daily means, I don't know why I said that twice. Number 68. Absolute Vodka, currently owned by Pernod Ricard, used to belong to the Swedish government. It was sold to the French company in 2008 for $8.3 billion. Number 69. Slut decision. When the Yuletide season swings around in Sweden, Coca-Cola sales can drop sometimes more than 50% due to the tradition of drinking Julmust, a Swedish Christmas soft drink created as an alternative for beer. Number 70. Another traditional Swedish Christmas drink is Glåeg, which is 100% the most unappetizing name for a beverage ever conceived. Glåeg is mulled wine poured over aquavit, a clear caraway flavoured liquor, and then set on fire, because why not? It's traditional, by the way, to make sure the flame is out before drinking it, before you go singeing your eyebrows or burning your face off. Number 71. If you were wondering, what the Swedish hell is aquavit? You're in luck, because I'm about to tell you. Aquavit is a strong Scandinavian liquor of about 40% alcohol. Its name is derived from the Latin aqua vitae, which means water of life, which shows how troubling the alcoholism epidemic really is. Number 72. The famous Swedish smorgasbord, which involves a meal made up of many different individual dishes laid out on a table, i.e. a Scandinavian buffet, originated as a peasant custom where whole villages would collectively celebrate the harvest with roast game, as well as boiled potatoes and turnips, fresh smoked or pickled fish, meatballs, pancakes and soups. Number 73. Swedish cuisine is also notable for a particularly infamous dish known as Sostromming, which is Swedish for sour herring. Ugh. So Stromming consists of Baltic herring that has been fermented in tins for weeks on end, resulting in an odour so pungently foul that restaurants refuse to open the tins indoors. If that's not an indicator that shows why it shouldn't be served as food, I don't know what is, those crazy Swedes. Number 74. In 2016, the Swedish Tourist Association created the Swedish Number, a phone number which randomly connects callers to Swedish people who have signed up to be the ambassadors for their country. Participants are deliberately given no training or instructions on how to behave, with the idea that the random nature of the hotline, dubbed Caller Swede, provides callers with an unfiltered view of Swedish life. Funnily enough, I know this because Jennifer Lawrence gave me this phone number as her own. Thanks, Jen. Number 75. Similarly, Sweden has an official Twitter account which is managed on a week to week basis by a Swedish citizen, with the aim of promoting Sweden to the world. The project has inspired a number of similar accounts, such as at We Are Australia and at People of Leeds. Number 76. Sweden even has a national font, Sweden Sands. The design of the snazzy sans serif Swedish typeface was designed to unambiguously represent Sweden in the world. Well, that's what Sweden looks like, apparently. Number 77. Another slightly odd but intriguing Swedish tradition is that of the crayfish party, in which large groups of people get together and, as the name suggests, eat a crapload of crayfish. <laughs> sounds cray. Get... doesn't matter. This is because the harvesting of crayfish used to be restricted to a certain part of year around August and September. So seafood-loving Swedes would take advantage of the opportunity to eat a crapload of crayfish, and did just that, resulting in a fun Swedish tradition that must be fun if you're not, I don't know, allergic to seafood. In which case, just don't do it. Number 78. In the Swedish town of Javle, a decades-long battle continues to rage at Christmas time, where many of the residents get together to build a giant straw goat, symbolizing the goats that pull Santa's sleigh. Oh yeah, sorry, by the way, I should have said, in Sweden, goats pull Santa's sleigh, not reindeer, just go with it. 
Anyway, other residents who identify more with Sweden's pagan history view the large goat as akin to the two goats that pulled the chariot of the Norse god Thor, who would burn and eat them every night only for them to be resurrected the next morning. Don't do that in the movies, do ya? As such, half the town builds the goat, and the other tries to burn it down. Unsurprisingly, the goat burns most years. Number 79. One iconic symbol of Sweden is that of the Dalekarlion, or Dala Horse, which are carved wooden horses that originate as children's toys from the Swedish province of Dalarna. They have since become a widespread cultural icon, and are often given as gifts to visiting celebrities such as Bill Clinton, Bob Hope, and Elvis Presley. They are produced in a wide variety of designs, but the most common form is painted in a distinctive bright red. Number 80. Sweden legalized homosexuality in 1944 and in 1972 became the first country in the world to allow transgender people to change their legal gender. The Swedes appear to be a fairly loving and accepting bunch. As of 2013, a whopping 81% of people in Sweden supported the rights for gay, lesbian and bisexual people to marry. Haha, <laughs> yeah, go Sweden! Number 81. In 1979, Sweden became the first country in the world to ban the smacking of children. Since then, over 30 other countries have done the same. Personally, I don't see what all the fuss is about. My parents smacked me, and I turned out fine. I mean, actress Jennifer Lawrence has taken out multiple restraining orders against me, but that's normal, right? Everyone's been sued by Jennifer Lawrence at some point, right? Right? Number 82. Sweden is also home to the second highest number of McDonald's restaurants per capita in all of Europe, with a mouth-watering 227 restaurants. That, by the way, is 23 restaurants per million people, which doesn't sound a lot, but is absolutely loads. Number 83. The world's first ice hotel was built in the 1980s in Azukajavi, which is only a few miles away from the aforementioned northernmost Swedish town of Kiruna. The now famous ice hotel was designed by architect Ingiv Bergvist and boasts 60 rooms that are available for bookings between December and April. Guests are given thermal jumpsuits to wear and sleep underneath several layers of super insulated bedding, so that, you know, they don't die overnight in the minus 8 degrees Fahrenheit frozen hell that is their bedroom. Number 84. Hilariously, the ice hotel is now required by local authorities to include fire alarms, despite almost entirely being made of ice. Like, it's in the name of the place. If it were called the Dry Grass and Lighter Fluid Hotel, maybe they'd have a point, but surely if there was a fire, you'd notice because the fucking place is melting. Number 85. The Es Range Space Center, again located only a few miles away from Kiruna, is a space and climate research center and is also Europe's only civilian rocket base. Rocket launches, balloon ascents, and the testing of unmanned aircraft have all been carried out at this Swedish base. Number 86. A genuinely impressive Swedish feat regards the nation's incredible recycling habits. Sweden is so good at recycling that it's actually run out, and as such imports around 80,000 tonnes a year from Norway to give their neighbours a hand. Number 87. When the classic Monty Python film Life of Brian was released in 1979, Norway found its content so objectionable that it banned the movie, accusing the creators of blasphemy. They're not blasphemers, they're just very naughty boys. Norway's neighbours in Sweden, who are apparently much more chill about the whole blasphemy thing, ran ads for the film which exclaimed, the film that's so funny it was banned in Norway. Aw, oh, sick burn, Swedes, good one. Number 88. In the early 70s, Sweden decided to capitalise on the economic growth of the up-and-coming best country in the world, North Korea, by sending them 1,000 Volvo 144s, expecting then-leader Kim Il-sung to pay for them. Shocker, North Korea never paid for them. Since then, it's become somewhat of a tradition in Sweden to send North Korea a reminder every six months asking for the 300 million euro they are owed, knowing full well that pigs will sooner fly. Number 89. Everyone loves Donald Duck, I mean look at him, but for some reason, the people of Sweden really love Donald Duck, probably due to Donald's provocative semi-nudist fashion sense. In fact, Swedes love Donald Duck so much that the country had to make voting for him illegal, as his name would often be used when voters wanted to issue a protest vote, or just simply didn't care. What could go wrong with having a Donald in power? Oh, I see, okay. Number 90. Sweden has instituted a countrywide opt-in SMS system, which sends citizens a text message when someone nearby has a heart attack, allowing assistance to reach them as soon as possible to provide CPR. In 40% of cases, ambulances were beaten to the scene of a heart attack by text message receivers. Number 91. Speaking of health-related text, in Sweden, blood donors receive a text message every time their blood is used to save a life. How bloody lovely. <laughs> Get it? Get it? Oh, it's fact 91. Give me a break. Number 92. When a fellow by the name of Erik of Pomerania was disposed after reigning as King of Sweden, as well as Norway and Denmark between 1389 and 1442, he apparently just said, f it, and became a pirate on the Baltic Sea for 10 years. Baller move, bro. Number 93. Sweden was the first country to detect a nuclear disaster at Chernobyl, which the Soviet Union was desperately trying to keep quiet, when a worker set off radiation detectors at the Forsmark power plant. 
He had been contaminated while walking through grass that had been showered by radioactive rain picked up from Chernobyl over 800 miles away. Number 94. Sweden is the proud owner of one of the world's only taxidermied blue whales, located at its Natural History Museum. The public was previously allowed to walk inside it up until a couple was caught having sex inside it, ruining whale entering privileges for everyone, but probably getting a great anecdote in the process. Number 95. In 2011, a man in southern Sweden was arrested on charges of unauthorized possession of nuclear material, which he did actually have simply because he wanted to see if it were possible to split an atom in his kitchen. Number 96. Let's cut back to the 1980s. The Swedish Navy detected underwater sounds that they suspected to be hostile Russian submarines. The suspicion escalated to such a degree that it eventually became a full-blown diplomatic conflict between Sweden and Russia. It later turns out the sounds were, of all things, fish farts. Number 97. In 1967, Sweden switched from driving on the left to driving on the right, which must have confused literally everyone and probably caused hundreds of car accidents. On the 3rd of September 1967, all vehicles came to a complete stop at 4.50 a.m. before switching lanes, then stopped again before proceeding at 5 p.m. Number 98. Bizarrely, in Sweden, drivers must have their headlights on at all times while driving, even in broad daylight. Number 99. Of Sweden's top 20 surnames, only one of them, Lindbergh, doesn't end in Sun. Number 100. In 2015, a Swedish man managed to convince the government to give him disability benefits by claiming that he was addicted to heavy metal. Roger Tolgren said that his love of the genre, which had compelled him to attend around 300 heavy metal concerts in the space of one year, had left him unable to work a full-time job. Wow, that is some truly brazen bullshit. Good work, Rog. Number 101. Ah, there is the thing. For decades in Sweden, bars and clubs required an expensive license to allow their patrons to dance in their establishments. On a number of occasions, businesses had their licenses to sell alcohol revoked for hosting unlicensed dance parties, and many people were literally arrested. The frankly embarrassing law was finally repealed in 2016, and it's a good thing too, because I like to get my dancing shoes on. Coming at you, Stockholm. Although, I should be arrested for that, really. Just sheer dance ability. Anyway. That was 101 Facts About Sweden. Which country, or indeed not country, anything else? What would you like to see next? Let me know in the comments below. And also, give this video a like and subscribe, of course. And also, there are two videos on screen right now. I think you're really going to like them, so click on one of them and watch it. In the meantime, though, hey, Dora!